So today I'm going to be showing you how to navigate the app. I'm going to be walking you through each tab and explain what each one is for. So let's begin. Once you open the VV app, you'll notice that there are five main tabs at the bottom. And within each one, you'll find sub tabs. You have the store, collection, feed, market, and profile. Let's start with the store. Now the store can be considered as the home page of the app. In the section called dropping soon, that's where you'll find upcoming drops along with the date and the time that they're launching. Keep in mind that there are VV users all over the world and the time zones differ for each country. But don't worry, you will see the time in your specific time zone. This tab will only appear when there are upcoming drops. If you scroll to the right and click on view all, that's where you'll see all the drops in the order that they came out. And if you click on each one of them, you'll be able to see the full details of the drop, such as the price and the different variants. Let's go back to the main page. If you scroll a little lower, that's where you'll see the latest drops, collectibles, and comics. And a little lower than that, you have the brands that have dropped on Vivi so far, as well as your recently viewed items. Now, as for the sub tabs at the top, those are all things that you just saw, so it's just an easier way to access them. Now at the top right, you'll have your notifications where you can see all your transactions as well as when someone tags you or someone you follow posts something on the feed. And if you go back and click on the magnifying glass, that's where you'll be able to search anything in the store, market, or look for a specific account. Now let's go back and click on your collection. This is where you'll see your showroom. Here's a little guide on how to navigate and add collectibles to your showroom. Next up, you have my collectibles. This is where you'll see all the collectibles you own. And if you click on the view all, you'll be able to see your estimated vault value on the top right. Keep in mind that this is based on the floor price and does not take your mint into consideration. You'll have a separate value for your comics as well. So if you click on the collectible itself at the top right, you see your rarity and your edition number. As you can see, it rotates constantly to give you a 360 degree view. Now this is the fun part. To showcase your collectibles in AR, you can just scan your surroundings for a flat surface and tap anywhere to place your collectible. You can move it around, rotate it, and scale it to the size that you want. Once you're happy with the way it looks, you can take a picture. Now if you go back and click on the little eye, this is where you can get more information on that specific collectible. So let's start from the top. You have the name, the rarity, then you have the amount of likes and comments. This right here allows you to post something on a feed, and over here you can favorite the collectible. A little lower, you have sell on the market. So if you click on that, you'll have the option to put it as an auction or as a buy now price. If you click on sell at auction, you'll be able to set a start price. Keep in mind that auctions last 24 hours, and when someone wins an auction, they have 12 hours to complete the payment. And if they do not pay for that listing, they will get restricted from the marketplace for 72 hours. And as you can see, Vivi will charge you a fee to sell on the market. This fee differs by brand, so always pay attention to the percentage and make sure that your profit covers that fee. At the bottom, you can also see the current floor price, which is the lowest price on the market for that collectible. Now let's go back and click on sell for buy now price. You just have to enter the amount that you want to sell it for. And again, right under that, you can see the floor price and click on confirm details. Now let's go back to the information page. I'm just going to run quickly through this list. So you have the floor price, the price that you paid, the owner's name, which is your username, the edition number and type, the name of the collectible, the date that it dropped, the price that it was selling for on the drop, and the amount of additions that were released. When you see zero of a certain number remaining, this just means that all collectibles have been delivered to those who successfully purchased them on the store. Then you have edition type. We'll cover the different edition types further down the course, but keep in mind that not all collectibles have edition types, so you won't always see this section right here. Next, you have the season that it dropped, the rarity, the license, the brand, and the series. Now, if you go back to collection, you have my comics, my sets, and my wish list. You can also add a custom list and name it whatever you want, but personally, I've never used that. Next, we have the feed. We have a whole video dedicated to the feed where I show you how to use it to your advantage, 
So we'll just look at this quickly right now. At the top, you can search for posts by hashtag. And if you click this button right here, you can either share a message, a video, or a photo of your showroom. Like I said, we'll look at the different ways to use the feed later on. So let's move on. Now for the market, the market layout has changed not too long ago, but this is what we have right now. So you'll see the collectibles and comics for sale. Let's click on this collectible right here. This is the amount that are currently available for sale on the market, and this is the rarity. I can sort the listing by price, edition number, or listing date. And I can filter the listings by fixed price or auction. Here you have the seller's profile, the edition number, and the price. If I'd like to purchase it, I just click on the collectible, and then the buy now would appear just as it would on the drop. Now if I click on auction, it's very similar. I can see the seller's profile, the edition number, the amount of bids on this collectible, the time remaining on the auction, and the current price. Now if I click on this listing, and I scroll just a little lower, I'll see the bid history and place a bid if I'd like to. Now we're just going to take a quick look at the comics because it's a little different. This is the amount that are available for sale on the market. This amount includes all the variants of the drop. You'll also see that the comics are color-coded to define the rarity. Then once you select the comic that you would like to go for, it's the same concept as collectibles, where you have the fixed price and auctions and the layout is exactly the same. Let's go back to the market page. So you have popular brands, auctions available if you want to bid on them, and right under that, you have suggestions to complete your sets based on the collectibles that you already own. And here you have all the collectibles that are available on the market. Now for the sub tabs, you have collectibles, comics, my bids, listings, and brands. We just saw collectibles, comics, and brands, so we won't look at them again. Then you have my bids where you can see your current bids and any bids that you've won or lost, and you can even sort them by comics or collectibles. This is where you'll see any listings that you have for sale on the market, either by fixed price or auction. If you click on add listing, this is another way that you can sell your collectibles. And last but not least, you have profile. This is where you'll see your username and your profile picture. You can see how many collectibles, comics, and sets that you own, and how many followers that you have. If you click on wallet, you can see your gem balance, you can purchase more gems, and like I said previously, Vivi will use whatever payment method you have set up in your App Store or Google Play Store to purchase those gems. You can see here that one gem is one US dollar, but keep in mind that there will be fees. If you click here, you can see all your transactions that were done either through the app, the store, or the market. So you'll have the date, the type of transaction, the amount, and your remaining balance. You can also have a more detailed view if you click on the transaction itself. And here you can see all the details such as the addition number, the account that you had the transaction with. In this case, you can see that it was purchased from the store, any fees related to that transaction, the exact time, and the transaction ID. If you go back and click on my profile, you can add anything you'd like to your bio, and you can also make your profile private. Setting your account to private disables other users from seeing the amount of collectibles and comics that you own. If your account is not set to private, other users will see your collectibles, comics, and sets. However, they could only see the collectibles that you decide to show them, and you do that by clicking on Add Collectible. Now, let's go back to following. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's where you'll see users that you follow. And if you go back to promo code, this is something that was added recently. It's meant to add real-world utility by allowing users to redeem event-exclusive collectibles. Let's go back to my QR code. This is a code that is unique to your profile. This is normally used to transfer gems and collectibles from one account to another. However, both of those features have been temporarily disabled. And then for settings, you just have the basic settings like any other app would have. Vivi is still fairly new and is continuously adding new features to the app, so always make sure that you have the latest version downloaded. The more time you spend on the app, the more comfortable you'll get using it and navigating through the different tabs. And this concludes our tour for the app.